You do it just by pinching? Yeah. yeah. Shiki pincha mole. Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Jataha Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam <coughs> Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Om Agyana Timirandasya Gyanam Janasamasya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama <coughs> Vansha kalpata rupyascha, kripa sindhu bya evacha, patitanam pavane bhyo, vaishnave bhyo namo namaha. <coughs> namo mahabadanyaya, Krishna prema pridayate, Krishnaya, Krishna chaitanya namane, Gaura Trishe Namaha <coughs> Nitya Nandam Namastubhyam Prema Nanda Pradayane Kalo Kalamashanashaya Janava Pataye Namaha Panjatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhaktavataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam <coughs> He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Go Pesha Go Pika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute <coughs> Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye <coughs> Jayatam Shuruta Pangor Mama Manda Matera Gati Matsarvasva Padambo Jo Radha Madana Mohano Divyad Vrindaranya Kalpadrumadha Srimadratanagar Singhasanasto Shri Madhuradha Shri Lakovinda Devo Preshta Libhi Sevya Manosmaram <coughs> Shri Manrasara Sadambhi Vam Shivata Tatakstitaha Karshan Venus Vanair Gopir Gopinata Shri Estunaha Brindai Tulsi Debai Priyai Keshavasya Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Bhaktya Vihina Aparadha Lakshai Kshiptascha Kamadi Taranga Madhye Kripa Maitvam Sharanam Prabhamna Brinde Namaste Charanar Vindam <coughs> Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. First of all, I'm offering my <coughs> unlimited Dandavat pranams 
at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev. Nitya Lila Pravishtom Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada and then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Astotarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And I offer my Dandavat pronounced to the lotus feet of all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nupa Guru Varga and my Dandavat pronounced to all of the Vaishnavas and all of the Vaishnavas. So I just said I went like this and I never really said no. Oh, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> you often you pronounce all Vaishnava. Yeah. Actually, you are a Vaishnava. She goes to the Bhagavad Krishna and Nitya Das. You just don't realize it yet. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's why yeah. the Devaki Nandan says to all Vaishnavas, whoever were, who are, and whoever will be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One day. We just have to realize that we're not this body. We do indeed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, you know, we have people go, oh my God, Prabhupada said it so many times. I'm starting to realize that he maybe didn't say it enough. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it really needs to be important. No, he is the Acharya of Jeev, Jeeva Tattva, understanding the difference between the living entity and that which is not living. Yeah. He is the Acharya of that. He said, when you meet a new person, tell them three things. Tell Hare Krishna, we're not your body, we come for a feast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chant and be happy. Yeah, that's the fourth thing. <laughs> Chant Hare Krishna, we're not your body, come to our Sunday feast and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now, <clears throat> in the Brajamandala Parikrama book, yesterday, we had quite a beautiful reading uh, from Srila Gurudev about the various kunjas in the transcendental, eternal, nitya, Radha Kund, Shama Kund, because Radha Kund, Shama Kund are not of this plane. Giri Raja Govardhan is not of this material plane. They have descended. They're eternal associates of the divine couple. Mm. So within this material world, they have a geographic location, right? But actually you can't go there uh, truly only by a plane ticket mm. and getting on a, in a taxi and uh, landing with your feet walking there. That place is fully transcendental. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has made this very explicit in his purport in the Upadesha Amrita, which I'm also going to read tonight. I think it's important that we should also, while we're on this topic of uh, of Sri Radha Kund Shama Kunda, and we're completing the Parikrama, that we should also hear from our Acharyas, especially Srila Rupa Goswami, who composed the three shlokas that will educate every single, every single devotee, every single person who's trying to become a devotee, to make us understand what are the glories? What is the exalted nature of Shamakund Radhakunda? You know, Rupa Goswami wrote the Upadesha Amrita, 11 verses. And verses 1 through 8 are the process. 
right? The process to come into the pathway of Rag Marg Bhakti. And especially Gurudev would always emphasize the eighth shloka. We know it. Tanam Rupa Charitari Sukirtananu Smritio Kramena Rasana Marasi Niyoja Tishtan Braje Tat Anuragi Janagami Kalam Nayed Akilam Iti Upadesha Saram. You know the meaning? You know this verse yet? No? So this is the verse that Srila Gurudev would always highlight. That what is the essence of all instructions that have been given? The whole Vedic knowledge. Uh, Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana, everything. The essence of all Upadesh. So he said, Iti Upadesha Saram in this eighth verse. Sara means the essence, and Upadesh means instructions. So what is the essence of all instructions? Well, only a personality like Srila Rupa Goswami is truly capable of pointing that out to us and to the whole world. And he certainly has done this, right, in the eighth verse. So, what is he telling in the 8th verse? Tannama, Rupa, Charitadi, Sukirtananu, Smrityo, Kramena Rasana, Manasi, Niyoja. First half. So, Tannama, Rupa, Charitadi. So we know Nam means the holy names of Krishna. Rupa means forms. Charita means character or qualities. Adi means beginning with Adi. And also the Dham, the eternal associates, all of these things. Nam, Rupa, Guna, Lila, Parikar. So he's saying. Tannama Rupa Charitari Sukirtananu. Sukirtan. Oh, can we turn that light on? Sukirtananu. So, we know what Kirtan means. But what does Sukirtan mean? Very nicely. Excellent. Doing Sukirtan. And he's describing now. What is that Sukirtan? Uh, Sukirtan Anu. Here he has the word Anu. Anu, we know that it has two meanings. So Anu means continual, and it also means uh, following. When we say the word anugatya, so anugatya means to be under the guidance of, right? So sukirtan anu. You know? Sukirtan, when one is performing the chanting of the names, forms, qualities, pastimes of Sri Krishna, then one has to be <clears throat> under the guidance of higher, exalted, pure, rasik Vaishnavas. This is the ideal. Sukirtanan of Smritya, remembering. Kramena. Kramena means in a sequence, step by step. Manasi Niyoja. Manasi means one's mind. And niyojya means completely absorbed. Step by step, deeper, 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 deeper. Manasi, niyojya. Shmityo kramena, manasi, niyojya. Rasana. Rasana, yeah, I forgot the word. Rasana. What does rasana mean? Tongue. 
So there's a methodology. Tongue, mind, and vocal cords. This process of doing this type of kirtan, of the holy names, forms, qualities, pastimes of the Supreme Lord, sukirtananu, under the guidance and continual, uh, smrityo, remembering. The objective is to become completely absorbed in remembering and one's mind completely absorbed in this. How often? 24 hours. <laughs> then, Tishtan, where will, where will you be doing this? What is the most favorable place in the whole universe to actually be doing this process, attempting? Uh, so, Tishtan Brajay. Tishtan Brajay. Being situated in Braj. Navadita, also non-different. But Braj, that has manifested on this plane, that the Supreme Lord has descended with his eternal associates and performed all of his pastimes, that the Supreme Lord again ascended, descended in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and came to this Dham, to this very place. And he himself showed, by his own example, how to do parikrama of the Dham, how to be completely... Uh, completely immersed in separation mood. Mahaprabhu himself. We have the chapter in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Not only that, he sent ahead of him even. He sent Lokanath Goswami, Bhugarva Goswami. Who else? There was one third person here. These were older associates of Mahaprabhu. He sent them to Braj to also discover the, the places of pastimes that had been forgotten over thousands of years. Then he sent the six Goswamis uh, to stay in Braj, to remain Tishtan Braje. I think Mahaprabhu was the other one, because he's the one who discovered Radha Kunjana. No, no, there's three persons we were just reading yesterday. Uh, I know who it is, but I, I just forgotten. Bhagavad Goswami. Huh? Lokanath Goswami, and there's a third mm. elder person. Anyway. Sorry. So, uh, now, being situated in such a favorable location, Tishtan Braje, now there's another requirement. While you are attempting to do this in such a place, you must have this one. This is the chief requirement. Tad Anuragi Jananu Kami. So here's the three Anus in this first verse. So, anu, Anu, Anu. So at the end of that line, Rupa Goswami has written, Tad Tishtan Burjay Tad Anuragi Jan. Tishtan Burjay Tad Anuragi Jana Anugami Jana. So he's saying there are two different types of personalities that one must be under the guidance of the Anuragi Jan and the Anugami Jan. Anugami comes from the word what? Anuga. And Anuga means what? If we say we are Rup Anuga, followers. Okay. So first he says Tishtan Tad Anuragi. Who are the Anuragi Jan? This means the eternal associates who descended with the Supreme Lord in Braj Mandala, uh, and they have their eternal presence in Braj Mandala, just like we're reading about Radha Kun, Shama Kun. What are they actually witnessing? They are there in Krishna's pastimes eternally in the Dham, but that is hidden from the eyes of the conditioned souls. But the Anuragi Jan are whom we are to be introduced to in the pathway of Raga Nuga Bhakti. The whole system of Raga Nuga Bhakti is to hear about the Supreme Lord 
and his pastimes with his eternal associates. Uh, I'm trying to remember the Sanskrit verse. Siddhas, uh, Seva Sadaka Rupina Siddha Rupina Chattahi Tad Bhava Lipsuna Karya Vraja Loka Anusagata. Vraja Loka means the personalities who live in Vraja. Vraja Loka Anusagata. Anusara is so important word. I was mentioning the other day, there's anukar and anusar. Mm. Anukar means to imitate. Anusar means to follow. Mm. So the whole process is following. Anuga. See? So Rupa Goswami is emphasizing this point. Tad anuragi jan. Tad anuragi jan anugami. Uh, but it means anugami jan. Who are the anugami jan? Who are the Anugas? Because we are coming under their guidance. That Anuragi Jan, the eternal associates, they have Anurag, <coughs> eternal love for Krishna. They're also called Ragatmik Jan, mm. Gurudev would say. We don't even call them Ragatmik Bhaktas. No. <laughs> Gurudev said, Jan, his own people. But they're not doing sadhana. No, and they're not different than him. Yes. They're part of the entire whole, you know, conception of Krishna's eternal pastimes. You know, how Srila Sridhar Maharaj explains this in an right. inimitable way. They're him in a different form. Yeah. So, that flow is what we want to enter into. Yeah. Ultimately, we want to be completely captured by that wave, which is eternal, of Krishna's pastimes. We will be absorbed into that. We will have our eternal spiritual form and our eternal service to the divine couple, and we will be in the association of the anuragi, uh, yeah, the anuragi jan, who have ragatmic praying for Krishna. So, who were those anuragi jan? Here, Rupa Goswami is saying anugami jan. The anugami jan are the personalities who have played the role of the bhaktas uh, to teach us, who were sent to Braj, namely Rupa Goswami himself mm. and the six Goswamis, like this. And all of our Guru Varga. Yes, all of our Guru Varga. They're Anugas, Anugami. And they're showing how to perform Rag Anuga, Bhakti. So when we sing, like this morning, we sang the Sad Goswami Astakam. Mm. And there, it's talking of how they traversed the land of Braj, the six Goswamis. Uh, and they became immersed in the eternal pastimes. And they felt so much separation mood continually. And their, very, their hearts were agitated with the, the extreme praying. Uh, but they are playing the role of the Anugas. To show us. So the Anuragi Jan would be the eternal associates as they are, and mm. Anugami would be those who are in the role of sadhakas that we can literally take shelter of, who can right. bring us. So Raghunath Das Goswami, we know his eternal identity, it's mm. been revealed. Right. Right. But he is externally Seva Sadhaka Rupena. Right. He's doing his seva, his bhajan, his sadhana, everything, with his body, within this world. And sometimes he's in external. Is it called bahir? Basha. Bahir what? Basha. Basha? No, that's external. No, not basha. Uh, dasha. Bahir dasha. Bahir dasha. Yeah. Antar dasha, bahir dasha. Yes. And bahir antar. Sometimes in, be in between external and internal. Right? So, Raghunath Das Goswami is the example right. in Chaitanya Leela how the conditioned souls can come from the first stages and gradually progress, progress, progress. And Raghunath Das Goswami being the follower of Rupa Goswami and the very Prayojan Tattva Acharya. He is the Acharya who's showing the example of how to attain the ultimate goal, 
So, in this way, these are the Anugami Jan who have been sent by the Lord. They are eternal associates, but they're living in this world. All of our acharyas in the, are in that category. They're living in, within this world to teach by their own example, you see, and to assist the Lord in his pastimes. The preaching of Gauranga Mahaprabhu's movement is always Mahaprabhu's pastime. It's not different than Mahaprabhu. <laughs> so, so the Lord and his associates, uh, they are involved in this seva, to save the conditioned souls. So in this way, Rupa Goswami very clearly, very concisely, he's telling what to do. What is the essence of all the instructions that if you have heard and you've studied Bhagavatam and you, you've been in the association of Vaishnavas and you've been trying to apply this in your life, ultimately, what's the the final stage that you should come to in your sadhan bhajan. This is it in this eighth verse. Now, it continues, tishtan braje tad anuragi jananugami kalam nayed akilam. Akilam means all. Mm. All what? All of your time. Kalam nayed akilam. Huh? Complete. Yes, complete. Akilam, all of your time. He's not saying, oh, a couple of hours or any number of hours. He's actually saying all. And who demonstrated this? Our acharyas. Even, even, even our contemporary acharyas. Huh? Our contemporary acharyas. This is, this, this is the process of perfection. This is the very process of attaining perfection. Anything less than this, it will not be sufficient. Mm. Of course, there's the element of mercy. Mm. It's all an element of mercy because to be even able to begin to practice like this, it requires tremendous mercy. Tremendous. You can't do the first stages without being in the Anuvatya anyhow. Yeah. Uh, Pujapad Madhavar has told that Gurudev said, he was speaking about on the first day of Kartik, he mentioned the <coughs> verse this, this year. Mm. And he said that Srila Gurudev said what these three Anus mean. Anugatya, Anugatya, Anugatya. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said that Gurudev said that. Yes. And I thought that was, that was quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. We had it drummed into us by Gurudev. Mm. Anugatya. He didn't always use the word all the time, but he would always be talking about how one has to associate with exalted Rasik Mahavagwat Vaishnavas. Mm. He would say, Tattva Gya Rasik Vaishnava. Tattva Gya Rasik Vaishnava. The, the Rasik Vaishnava is the highest Tattva Gya. Means knowing all Tattva Siddhanta perfectly. Mm. So that's why Tasmat Guru Prapadecha Jigyasu Shreyutamam Shabde Parecha Nishnatam Brahmani Upasamashrayam Shabde Brahma, Shabda Brahma. He is fully conversant, not just with the memorization of shlokas and the capability of repeating, but he has realized Shabda Brahma. Well, that's why Krishna says in the Gita to Arjuna, when he's telling Arjuna about approaching a spiritual master, then he's saying, Tadvidi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadek shanti te kyanam kyani nas tattva darshinaha. Tattva darshi. He sees. It's not a matter of intellectual. He sees tattva. There is no question that he can come under illusion. No, no question. Only if Krishna wants to place him under illusion like he did with Lord Brahma or whatever, <laughs> to assist his pastimes, yes. But he's perfected. He cannot fall down. So completing uh, this verse, Rupa Goswami is saying, Chishtan uh, being situated in Braj, Tad Anuragi, Jananugami, Kalam Nayed, Akilam, Iti Ubadesha Sadam. Utilizing one's full time in this way. 
iti upadesha sadam. This is the essence of all instructions. So Gurudev really emphasized this shloka. Mm -hmm. He wanted it to be known that if you're really on this pathway, then you have to focus all of your efforts and attention to go in that direction. That one day you can do this. Mm -hmm. So every one of our acharyas have demonstrated this, how they attain perfection mm -hmm. through this type of nam bhajan, unceasing. Mm -hmm. So after the eighth verse, then Rupa Goswami he begins to acquaint us with Shamakund Ratakund Govardhan, and he shows the um, comparison in the first verse of different places, mm. right? So I'm just going to refer to that one second. You know what Gurudev, when he would chant that Tanama Rupa Charitari, he would mm -hmm. always say, Tanama Rupa Charitari Sukhitanam, Krame Narasana. Yeah, he never said Smriti. Yeah. Well, the Acharyas who are so perfected, like Prabhupada, he would reverse words. And, right. <laughs> <you know. laughs> so now, verse 9, these last three verses. Verse 9, the question is being asked. What is the top most holy place? Mm. So this verse, Vaikuntaj Janito Varamadhupuri Tatra Pirasot Savad Vrindaranyamudara Pani Ramana Tatra Pigo Vardhana Radha Kunda Miha Pigo Kulapate Prema Mrita Plavana Kuryad asya virajito giritate sevam viveki naka. So here at the end of the verse, he is saying, sevam viveki naka. Rupa Goswami is asking, who is there who is really intelligent? He is a viveki. Mm -hmm. Viveki means one who can carefully discriminate. Mm. That's he has that kind of sharp intelligence. So he's saying Sevam Viveki Naka. Who is there who will not serve this Radha Kund? If he's really a Viveki, who he can you find any Viveki who will not be able to recognize that this is what they have to do is to serve Radha Kund? It's also implying that whoever is not willing to do that yeah. is not a Viveki. Not a Viveki. They haven't understood. <laughs> so the translation, <clears throat> due to Sri Krishna's having taken birth there, the abode of Mathura is superior, even to Vaikuntha. And we're talking about on this plane here, <laughs> within this <clears throat> Bhon Lila of the Supreme Lord. The place on the earth planet, which is called Mathura, in the district of Mathura, in India, right? This physical location uh, is superior to even the realm of Vaikuntha. Mm. The realm of Vaikuntha is beyond this universe, beyond all the material creation, universes, beyond the Viraja, it's the Paravyom, it's the eternal spiritual sky, you know. But yet, here, Rupa Goswami is explaining that Mathura, where Sri Krishna has taken his birth. Mm. Now, taking his birth, we know that he took birth from Vasudev and Devaki, but not in the same way that he took birth in Vrindavan. But we're getting there. Doesn't Vrindavan. this term Madhupuri include Mathura Mandal? Yes, yeah, it includes also includes Mandal. Mathura Mandal. Yeah. It but but Madhupuri, still, there's a difference mentioned here yeah. between even Vrindavan and Mathura, right? Mathura Puri. So, due to Sri Krishna's having taken birth there, the abode of Mathura is superior even to Vaikuntha, mm. the realm of spiritual opulence. Mm. 
Next, right. superior. You were talking about the it, the speciality of the um, Naravat Lila, yeah. and the depth of that determines the yes. the highest yes. conception, right? Yeah, so because Madhukuri means because higher means sweet, from rasa vichar, right. from rasa vichar, which has the higher rasa. Mm. You see, so now superior to Mathura is the forest of Vrindavan. So Vrindavan is in Braj Mandala, in Mathura Mandala. There is the place called Vrindavan. Is and that is that the Vrindavan forest? Does that also include Bhadravan and all of the no, other Vrindavan? Vrindavan forest. Okay. Yeah? Why? Right. Why? Because there the festival of the Rasa dance took place, Rasot Savat. Right. The great festival of the Rasa dance, the first one. So surrounding took place Lushi, there. That, right. that area. But we also mention how in the Vrindavan Ashtakam mm. that there's three perimeters mm. of Vrindavan and it goes all the way up to Govardhan. Yeah. Okay. So now why is the forest of Vrindavan superior to Mathura? Because there the Ras Lila took place. Utsava. The Ras Utsava. Mm. Right? Now superior to Vrindavan forest is where? Govardhan. Govardhan Hill. Yeah. It's superior to Vrindavan forest because why? Sri Krishna raised it with his lotus hand. And he performed many pastimes there with his devotees. Mm -hmm. Not just raising it, not just Krishna's pastimes, we are hearing how so many sweet pastimes and Ras Lila and everything took place there, around Govardhan. So it's actually superior to Vrindavan Forest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because such an intimate pastime of holding Giri Raj. That's why we're so fortunate when we celebrate every year Govardhan Anukut festival. Also in the caves of Govardhan. Oh, the caves and the crevices and the and the waterfalls and the intimate kunjas. But especially, especially in the secret caves that Giri Raj has provided. Yes, yes. Yes. So then, yet. Superior even to Govardhan Hill is where? Radha Kund. Radha Kund. Because why? There's a special thing that you get there that in no other place. Because it immerses one in the nectar of Sri Krishna's divine <coughs> love. It immerses one in that. Aplavanat means to immerse those who bathe in its waters. Aplavanat. Radha kunda ihabi. Aplavanat. Premamrita. Yes. Gokulapate. Drowns everyone. Like a deluge of premras. <laughs> yes. So that makes it superior even to Govardhan Hill. Now. After telling this, Rupa Goswami is saying, what intelligent person would not desire to render service to this magnificent pond, which is splendidly situated at the base of Govardhan Hill? Mm. So we heard yesterday how Mahaprabhu it took him to discover right. the Shana Nobody else could do that and establish it. And then Raghunath Das Goswami renovating and all. And all of our acharyas have gone there and done intense bhajan, all of them. You read that verse to us yesterday from Skanda Purana. Yeah. About Radha Kund. Yata Radha Priya Vishnos Tasya Kundam Priyam Tata Tasya Kundam Priyam Tata Sevaika so it's as dear to Krishna. The Radha Kund is as dear to Krishna as Shrimati Radharani herself. Right. There's no difference between her and her pond. So this has to be realized. 
It is not just a matter of going there and uh, you know renting a room or you know putting up a, a you know a mud hut yeah. on the banks and realizing what is Radha Kunda. And this is the problem because the places generally, at least in recent times, in recent last few hundred years, uh, many unscrupulous individuals who are not qualified to be there even, uh, they stay there and then they get involved in all kinds of mundane activities and <coughs> sinf even sinful activities and so forth. So that's why Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, when he came to Radhakunda on the Brajamandal Prikama, yeah. do you know what he gave class on? Do you know what he lectured on for a number of days? Upadesha Amrita. Mm. Yes. And for those who are there for the purpose of only enjoying their senses and increasing Tanaka Kamani Pratishta, he said, for them it is not Radha Kun. Our Prabhupada said, yeah. Srila Bhakti Saranta Saraswati right. Prabhupada said, for them it is Naraka Kun. Naraka Kun. Also, Srila Sridhar Maharaj mm. mentioned how Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he talked about. Uh, I think they use the, the word, the Bengali word for pond, mm. pukur. pukur. Pukur churi. Mm. Pond thieves. Sure. You ever heard that? <laughs> no. Srila Sri Dharmas explained wow. this. Pond thieves. Wow. They think that they can go, just like a thief steals some object right. that they can grasp and take it away. Mm. They think that they can put a, 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 a hut there and be able to experience and enter into Radha Kund. Right. Never, 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 never. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur expressed, Srila Sridhar Maharaj explained this also, that he personally, when he would come to Radha Kunda, he would not go in the Kunda. Mm. He would not bathe in the Kunda. He would very reverentially stand on the banks and offer prayers, mm -hmm. then take some drops on his head. As far as staying at Radha Kunda, he said, I cannot stay there, I cannot remain there at night. My gurus can remain there, but I will stay some distance away in Govardhan, and I will come there to render service to them. To their lotus feet, and then I will return there. Sounds like Pujala Raga Patagora Bhagavan. Yes, that's what it is. And walking on our heads. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. So, the uh, very wonderful uh, purport of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati is there. Um, not sure if it's this verse or the final, the mm -hmm. 11th verse, but at any rate. Upadesh Prakashika Tika, you know, there's three, three purports. One is by Srila Bhakti Vinotak, or one is by Radharaman uh, Das Goswami. Das Goswami. Radharaman Goswami. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then, and then the other is by Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So, so Radharaman Goswami, he says, <coughs> the previous verse, and, and they're including, Bhakti Vinod and Bhakti Siddhant are including his commentary because it's accepted by them. You know, he was the one that assisted Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada in their preaching to re-establish the um, Archa Vigraha Tattva. Oh. Oh. He was that uh, contemporary. Goswami. Yeah, that contemporary. Person who wrote this commentary. Archa. Okay. I didn't know exactly what period. And also, I was assuming that he Bhakti was Vinod from Thakur a few hundred stayed years there. before. Bhakti Vinod Thakur stayed there in, in yeah. that Radharaman Gera when he came to uh -huh. Vrindavan with okay. young Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri okay. Thakur. Okay. And he was the one also um, who, who helped with this Brahmana and Vaishnava and oh. gave the assurances that this mm -hmm. was um, all legitimate from Shastra. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we've heard historically from the Radha Ramana Goswamis. Okay. All right. So he is telling <coughs> in his Tika, the previous verse instructed us to perform bhajan while residing in Braj, right? 
The previous verse means verse number 8, which we just heard about. So it instructed us to perform bhajan while residing in Braj. This verse very clearly answers precisely where one should reside within Braj. <clears throat> Due to Sri Krishna's having taken birth there, the abode of Mathura is superior even to Vaikuntha, the realm of great spiritual opulence. Superior even to the abode of Mathura is the forest of Vrindavan, because there the festival of the Rasa dance took place. Superior to the Vrindavan forest is Govardhan Hill, because it playfully rested on Sri Krishna's lotus hand, and because there Krishna freely enjoyed, freely enjoyed many pastimes with his devotees. Yet, superior even to this Govardhan hill is the super-excellent Sri Radha Kunda, because it immerses one in the nectarian divine love that Sri Krishna, the moon of Gokul, feels for Srimati Radharani. The scriptures declare that Sri Radha Kunda is as dear to Sri Krishna as the daughter of Vishwamanu Maharaj, mm. Srimati Radhika herself. All the above-mentioned spiritual realms or locations where Sri Krishna performed pastimes are manifest from his internal potency, his Swaruk Shakti, and are therefore purely spiritual. However, Sri Radha Kunda is superior to them all because it manifests the highest display of the inherent variegated pastimes of Swaroop Shakti. Wow. So now Bhakti Thakur comments. The ninth verse informs us that Sri Radha Kunda is the best amongst all worshipful places. Mm. Because Sri Krishna took birth in the city of Mathura, it is superior to Vaikuntha, the realm of immense opulence in the spiritual sky. This point is being made over and over by each one of them. That is told in the verse, and now we've heard it twice, right? So, because Vaikuntha is the realm of immense opulence in the spiritual sky, mm -hmm. but the city, it says, says here, city of Mathura, uh, the place where Sri Krishna took birth, is superior to that Vaikuntha. Mm -hmm. And within the district of Mathura, the Vrindavan forest is the best location. So now in the expanded area, the district of Mathura, Vrindavan forest is the best location. Just remember writing that on the aerograms, Vrindavan district Mathura. Yeah. We used to have to write that. <laughs> yes. Govardhan Hill is the best place within the entire area of Braj mm -hmm. due to Udarapani, Sri Krishna, having performed various pastimes there. Wow. Udarapani means how he held up the hill with his hand. Pani means hand. And Udar means very, very merciful. So, Sri Radha Kunda is splendidly situated just near Sri Govardhan. It is the best place of all, due to being the special storehouse of Sri Krishna's nectarian divine love, Premamritam. Mm. Is there any person intent upon performing bhajan who would not desire to render service to Sri Radha Kunda? In other words, the devotees of Bhagavan most certainly render service to Sri Radha Kund, either in their material bodies or in their spiritually perfected forms. Devotees should execute the aforementioned process of bhajan while constantly residing at Radha Kund. Mm. Now, Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, short on the Vritti, he again is repeating the same sequence. So finally he comes to superior even to Govardhan Hill is Sri Radha Kunda because it overflows with the nectar of Sri Krishna's divine love. It is the best place of all. 
Hmm. Why is Radhakun the best place of all? If someone was going to ask you, why is Radhakunda the best place of all? Because it overflows with the nectar of Sri Radha's love. Krishna's love. Krishna's love. Krishna's love. Krishna, Krishna's divine love. Yes, it overflows. Premamrita plavanat. There is no place, no place greater than Radha Kunda. Mm. Can you find another place greater than Radha Kunda anywhere? No. In the whole entire material creation of uh, billions of universes? Is there any place? In all of the spiritual and material and Then all the spiritual world. and material worlds? Radhakun. <laughs> it seems like, and I remember reading this the first time when it first came out, you know, in 1975, and thinking, that's amazing that we're living on the same planet where these pastimes took place, where these places still are, we can go there. Uh, but many people think that just by going there, they're going to get it. They build their house there. They do this, they do that. They're going to get it. They're going to grasp it. Pukur <laughs> churis. <laughs> so therefore, he says, what intelligent person would not render service to Radha Kunda, which is so splendidly situated at the base of Govardhan. Mm. In other words, anyone endowed with true spiritual intelligence serves Sri Radha Kunda. Mm. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's eternal devotee, Sri Rupa Goswami, being fully conversant with the most elevated devotional sentiments within Gaur Hari's heart, he has described service to Sri Radha Kund as the topmost. The glories of Sri Radha Kunda are incomprehensible mm. and inaccessible even for loving devotees who may have taken shelter of Madhurya Rasa yet are devoid of devotion to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Wow. So I mean, other there are other devotees who have taken shelter of Madhuri Rasa, trying to take shelter. But it, maybe yeah. in other lines, but not yeah. taking shelter. Well, I can mention anymore. one of them. By my own experience, a very big shock to me. Hmm. The Monkey Bihari Goswamis. Right. I won't even get into the details of telling the story. But I happened to be there, being invited by another devotee to have lunch. Mm -hmm. And what the head pujari, because this devotee used to be a disciple of Gurudev, but he left. And he used to give a lot of money to them. So mm -hmm. we were able to sit in a small room just by Vanki Bihari and to, and to take the Mahaprasadam directly from Vanki Bihari. And that was the first and only time that I did that. Mm -hmm. But as we were being served by one of the head, if not the head, of the of the pandas, you know, the priests, then I said, "Oh, um, it would be really nice if I could hear from you about Sri um, uh, Hari Das. What's the full name again? The the one who in Banki Bihari he discovered Banki Bihari. Swami. Swami Hari Das. They call him Swami Hari Das. Yeah, and his samadhi is there. Niduvan. In Niduvan, right? Um, right. He discovered Banki Bihari in the um, Vishaka Kund in Niduvan. Yeah, in the Kunda. Vishaka Kund. Yeah. Yeah, and it's some people say that he was possibly like an incarnation of Narada, mm. because. He is the one that wrote hundreds and hundreds of radhas, which I've heard up to the present day. Like all the cinema, you know, mm -hmm. Bollywood cinema, they all follow all the ragas written by him. Great, great musician. And then there's that story. Tan Sain. Tan Sain, right? Great. Yeah. So, but what the Radharaman people, Not Radharaman, uh, Banki Bihari people think mm. is that he's an incarnation and that Lalita Devi they worship Lalita because her name is mentioned 
And they don't worship Radha. And they don't worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Did you mm -hmm. know that? And they don't really have access to Vrindavan. Right. But they, and then he began to talk in a negative way. Right there while I'm sitting taking the Mahaprasadam about Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. How some people say that he's such a great bhakta or this or that, you know. Or, you know, Chaitanya Charitamrita is an exaggeration and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was horrible. I was like shocked. God, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went to Mathura and I saw Sripad Madhav Maharaj there. And I mentioned to him, Madhav Maharaj, I just came from the Banki Bihari temple. And this is what happened. He says, yes, yes, we know about all that. We don't even go there. We never go there. Because they, they never brought us there on Parikrama. Yeah. But I, I, that's the first time that I heard people of the most popular temple in all of Vrindavan, Banki Bihari, they're mm -hmm. worshipping Krishna, right? But they don't accept Srimati Radharani and they don't accept Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So... Yes. So that's why he says here, the glories of Sri Radha Kunda are incomprehensible and inaccessible even for loving devotees who may have taken shelter of Madhurya Rasa, yet are devoid of devotion to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Wow. No way. It's impossible to have no devotion to Mahaprabhu and enter into Radha Kunda. Well, like Guru Dev said, if, you don't, if you're not following Srimati Radhika, you can't get access to Vrindavan. And he mentioned that very famous saint that she maybe became a maidservant of one of the kings in Dvarka yeah. because she doesn't accept Radharani. Right. Yeah. And so it will derail one out of Vrindavan right. if they're not accepting her. So now verse 10. Who is she Krishna's dear most beloved? So in verse 9, we learned... Where is the best place? Mm. Now, verse 10, who is Krishna's dear most beloved? Now he gives also a graduated uh, hierarchy, going from one to the next to the next to the next. It's higher, higher, higher. Is there a Gurudev commentary on the Vaikuntha Ashtanika? On, on what? On, on the verse 9? No, he doesn't, he doesn't have his own commentary. Oh, he just gave the three? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the verse written by Rupa Goswami by the way at, at the end of the purport of the 11th verse in the purport of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur you might recall that he tells the story of where the Upadesha Amrita came <coughs> and it was in Jagannath Puri when he himself was there with Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu had gone to the ocean like sometimes he would escape and go to the ocean and so he was sitting on the ocean uh, near to the waters with his bhaktas. And he was brought out of an internal state by their kirtan. Mm. Then he sat up. And what issued from his lotus mouth at that moment, Rupa Goswami heard. And from that he wrote Upadesha Amrita. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So. I think this 10th verse, I think the first time I ever heard it was you. Oh. I could have had you stand up and speak it, I think, here. Or, you know, I was like, <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Okay, so here's the verse. Karmibhya parito hare priyataya vyaktim yayur gyaninas tebhyo gyana vimukta bhakti parama premaika nishtas tata tebhyas ta pashupala pankaja drishash Tabyo pi sa radhika preshta tadvadiyam tadiya sarasi tam nashrayat kakriti. So there's a question also being asked at the end of this verse, just like in the previous verse. Here's the translation of this verse <clears throat> One who selflessly performs virtuous acts in accordance with the path of karma yoga is superior to those who merely seek to fulfill their selfish desires. So here's where the analysis begins. 
you've got various levels of conditioned souls. And on the lowest level are those who are simply trying to fulfill their selfish material desires. But superior to those persons are persons who selflessly perform virtuous acts in accordance with the path of karma yoga. So that's why the word karmibhya, mm. karmibhya is the first category that's being mentioned by Rupa Goswami. Is that like philanthropic works? Yeah, and, and you know, like karma kanda, mm. performing many pious activities, worshipping demigod, Giving whatever. charity and all Yeah, that and, and in order to attain material mm. elevation, but because they're performing these these acts in accordance with the path of karma yoga, so they are superior to the conditioned souls who are just like unregulated and like everybody, 99% of the population mm. in the world today, and they're, they're not performing those kind of virtuous, pious acts. There are pious individuals, no doubt, but because the, the civilization that supports this has been lost right. all throughout the world. What's huh? the difference between what you just mentioned yeah. and someone who likes to grow a garden but then offers it to Krishna, offers the flowers to Krishna? That's karma yoga. Also. Oh yeah, that's karma yoga. But this is this is karma path with karma kanda. karma kanda. Right. It's based on the Vedas, but it's not really directly for Bhagavan's pleasure. It's no, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. It's self. But um, the difference is that the regular non-devotees, which we call karmis, because we learn... But Prabhupada, this is where they got it from Prabhupada, because Prabhupada is referring to the general mass of people who are karmis because they're in the path of karma. Okay? They're not karma yogis. <laughs> or karma kandis. Or karma kandis. They're just karmis. You know, they live in the chain of repetitive good and bad activities and, and the good and bad results. So, you know, uh, of course it became like uh, a term that was derogatory. derogatory or looked down upon like that. But technically, according to technically, and the Shastra, well, they use the term Asur, which has been translated to yeah. demon, but yeah. means who is not following anything to do with Veda, Vedic anything. And then karmi would be who is following the karmakanda section of the Vedas. I don't know if you can apply the term asur, because uh, just like in the in the Gita, you have the four types of pious persons, mm. and they're called sukritina, mm. and then you have the four impious persons, which eventually become asura bhava mashrita at the at the most extreme end of it, but they are called duskritina. So they don't, they have duskriti, they don't have sukriti, mm. they're not pious, right? So the pious persons, they will worship the Supreme Lord right. in any religion or any part of the world. If they're pious, they have some sukritis, then they will, they will feel inclined toward worship and have faith and belief in God, you know? But the duskritinas, they're lacking that. And because of their duskriti, they cannot surrender. To the Supreme Lord. There's different degrees of ignorance in them. How does that begin? Namam Duskritina Mudha. Mudha. Mm. First Mudha, then Naradhama, then Mayaya Parita Jnana, then Asura Bhava Mashrita. Each one progressively uh, more distanced. These days you can say that this Asura Bhava is really taken over. Oh, yeah, well, the, the, you know, the elite globalist and all of that, they're all Asura Bhava. Absolutely, and 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 their and their servants, they're they're extreme asura bhav. Yeah. Like what Prabhupada wrote on the on the boat, I come to this terrible place. Who who want to yeah. take this? They were yeah. all absorbed in simply eating, sleeping, mating, and defending without any attraction. I mean, Prabhupada never came to America. He didn't have to come to America to read the consciousness of the Western world because, no. in living in India, he was privy to all the, the news and the Second World War and this and that. Yeah. And, and all the exalted devotees, they knew that all the leaders of modern human society are demonic. And that's why he wrote his first canto before he ever came right. and was pointing everything out, you know? Yeah. But, you know, what is going on now is that they've usurped over a few hundred years the power and control 
and their aim is full control, absolute, where they can't be deposed anymore. That's their, that's their plan right now. <laughs> and, and all demons get deposed. But it's always been like that, forever. It's history. forever, forever. So this is just a, and Kong says. Yeah, and, and you have the Mughal emperors and Aurangzeb, and you, have, you know, there's always demons. And there's always demons usurping, okay? Yes. You know, but right now, it's a very uh, unique kind of usurpment because they've, they've invented all these little technologies by which they think that they're going to be able to do it, you know? So it will not work. It will not work because the demons always get destroyed. But for some time, they may get the upper hand, you know? Harinam Sankirtan. Yeah, that is the solution. That's the Astra. It is. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now, uh, yep. we'll just go till till eight. Yeah. Now comes the second category, the Brahma Gyanis. Mm. Brahma Gyanis, who by dint of their spiritual knowledge, are transcendental to the three modes of material nature. Mm. Uh, they are more dear to Sri Krishna, the Brahma Gyanis. They're more dear to Sri Krishna than those pious followers of the karma path mm. who are forever occupied in performing virtuous deeds. Then more dear to Sri Krishna than the Brahma are his devotees, Krishna's own devotees, like Sanaka, one of the four Kumaras, who have abandoned the pursuit of knowledge. Mm. Jnana vimukta. What would be an example of a Brahma Gyani? Um, the four Kumaras. The four Kumaras were Brahma Gyanis. Until they smelled the Tulsi leaves from the Lord. Yes, and they became converted. And then they became, what is it, Jnana Vimukta? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jnana Vimukta. But they weren't Mayavadis. They weren't offended. No, Brahma Gyanis are different than Mayavadis. Right? Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaneti Shabdite. So, Vyaktimya your jnaninas tebyo jnavi mukta. So that category of jnavi mukta, bhakti parama. Right. Okay. So now he's describing that. Uh, more dear to Sri Krishna than the Brahma jnanis are his devotees like Sanak, who have abandoned the pursuit of knowledge and who consider bhakti alone to be the best path. Mm. <clears throat> In doing so, they have followed the statement in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 14th chapter, verse 3, Jnane prayasam udapasya namante eva. That one should abandon the endeavor for knowledge. Mm. <clears throat> then comes pure devotees like Narad, who are resolutely fixed in praying for Krishna, they are even more dear to him than all such devotees. So in the verse it says, Premaika Nishtas Tata. They are Premi Bhaktas, Prema Eka. They have one pointed in praying. So they're more dear to Krishna than all the other devotees who are Jnana Vimukta. Now, the Vraja Gopis are the next category. <clears throat> the Vraja Gopis, whose very lives belong solely to Krishna, are even more beloved to him than all such loving premi devotees. Mm. <clears throat> and amongst all those beloved gopis, Sri Mati Radhika is more dear to Sri Krishna than his own life. Wow. In precisely the same way, as she is more dear to Krishna than his own life, his, his, uh, he dearly loves her pond. Sri Radha Kunda. Wow. Therefore, here comes the question, what highly fortunate, spiritually intelligent person would not reside on the banks of Sri Radha Kunda in a state of transcendental consciousness performing bhajan of Sri Krishna's eightfold daily pastimes. Right. Not that ashray, last card is what everybody forgets yes. in a state of transcendental consciousness. Yes, and Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur will make that clear mm. in his purport. Uh, 
where he's talking about that not in this material body. Right. I forget the term that he's using. We'll, we'll find it. So, yes. It's in the purport to the next verse. So, now... So, in the 10th verse, yet another reason for taking shelter of and worshipping Sri Radha Kunda is being shown. What is the other reason was? It's the highest place. Mm -hmm. Right? And the best place. So, a follower of the path of Karmakanda, who is interested solely in enjoying the fruits of his actions, is actually indifferent to Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pious, they're doing so many. But they're indifferent to Bhagavan, like you were saying. How the, the Hindus, and they come to Vrindavan, they drink their lassi. <laughs> Isn't he like the moral atheists? Almost. It's, it's almost Something. atheism. It's not that they're opposed to Bhagavan, but they're indifferent. They're indifferent. So some are just going for sightseeing. Yeah. yeah. Some are going for... for but... Some... I mean, we met some, they came all the way to Vrindavan, they ended up at Govardhan, they didn't know anything about Govardhan, they didn't even know why they were there, and they didn't realize we were at Govardhan. Yeah. They, they heard about Vrindavan, but they never heard about Govardhan, Radhakun, or anything. Right. Then later on they discovered that this is the highest, yeah. topmost place, they and had did, no idea. And they're so near, mm. in Delhi or anywhere. So many of the, in Delhi, they're like, oh, I've never been to Vrindavan, or only once when I was a kid. Yeah, I know, I know. And they're like... You know, over 50, they went once when they were a child. Yeah. It's only a few hours away. <laughs> so, yes. So, they're actually indifferent to Bhagavan because they're interested solely in enjoying the fruits of their actions. Mm -hmm. Now, more dear to Bhagavan are jnanis who are inclined toward Nirvishesh Brahma, his impersonal aspect, which is merely a non specific manifestation of undifferentiated spirit. But that's different than Mayavad. Yes, right? it is. Yes. It is not Mayavad that's being spoken of here. Because the Brahma Jnanis, they, there's so many examples of them. You know, like even Durvasa is called a Brahma Jnani and so forth. Yeah. So, would Brahma Jnani? Well, I suppose, yeah, but he, I think he was... He said he was Mayavad, he said. But he was in the association of the Mayavad. But he was highly learned. He was very highly educated in all the Shastras. And, and he had some spontaneous attraction toward well, the yeah. names of the Lord. And well, he was also like, when he saw the devotee on the, on the uh, stairway in, uh, in Kashi, mm. in, and it was a devotee, and he saw that the devotee was manifesting spiritual symptoms of ecstasy. And he was completely stunned by that. Right, like Sarvabhoma also recognized that in Mahabharata. Yeah, but, but in this case, here's this sannyasi who's like really worked hard, mm. you know, but like he's he not getting it. He the Paramahamsa stage of yes, that. Yes, yes, right? yes. Fully self-controlled everything. Because he hadn't offended a person or book Bhagavan. Maybe. It, did it say that? Yeah. It, okay, yeah, see? It's somehow by extreme mercy as well. Yeah, you know, and uh, then began his very intensive search he just could he couldn't get it out of his mind he had to find out that devotee left and somehow or other he ended up in navadweep right in the island of godrama you know but maya bodies are considered offenders brahma bodies are not they're not right yeah they're not offenders a lot of times devotees get them <clears throat> mixed up but we see also that even a person can be in that category of mayavad associated with them and so forth and be thinking aham brahmasmi i am brahma mm. you know but yet some mercy can come to them and in this case seeing just seeing that devotee yes. was the spark that ignited you know and then it was like a blazing fire when he finally came into the kunja and he was laid at the feet of parmanza babaji uh, then he began to tell about his plight and that Babaji gave him shelter. 
It was a pretty quick dovetail too to yeah. a very very high stake of bhajan. Yeah, yeah. he realized his own straight up. Day. You are this person. Continue your sadhana bhajan and that. Yes. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. More dear to Bhagavan than such jnanis are his devotees, such as the four Kumaras, mm -hmm. <coughs> who are devoid of nirvishesh jnan, because they gave that up. Uh, and, oh, who are devoid of nirvishesh jnan, inclination towards his impersonal aspect, yet they possess aishwarya jnan, mm -hmm. awareness of his supreme majesty. Right. Okay? Now, Devotees such as Sri Narad, who possess Prem Nishta, a resolute and exclusive fixation in love for him, are even more dear to Sri Hari than such jnani bhaktas. So it's beyond the Shantaras aspect. Yeah. And superior to such loving devotees are the Brajagopis, mm. who possess an indescribable and unprecedented love for Sri Krishna and are therefore exceedingly dear to him. Mm. So in the Padma Purana it is said, and he quotes the verse, Yata Radha Priya Vishnos. Mm. Just as Srimati Radhika is most dear to Sri Krishna, her pond, Sri Radha Kunda, is equally dear to him. Mm. Among all the beloved gopis, none are as dear as Srimati Radhika. So this verse, quoted in Ujjvala Nilamani, this verse, Yata Radha Priya Vishnos, it's quoted in Ujjvala Nilamani. <clears throat> it proves that amongst all the gopis, Srimati Radhika alone is Sri Krishna's dear, most beloved. Mm. In precisely the same way, Sri Radha Kunda, her pond, which is actually non-different from her, mm. is exceedingly dear to Sri Krishna and is also the topmost place of residence for devotees. Therefore, what spiritually insightful person, desirous of performing bhajan, would not take shelter of that pond? Certainly any such person would take shelter of Sri Radha Kunda. Mm. So that's Radha Raman Das Goswami. And then there's two very short mm. purports that we'll complete there, and then tomorrow we'll study that last verse. Piyusha mm. <clears throat> Varshani Vritti of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He's saying, See, each one has something that you can, that the other didn't mention in each one of the purports, even if it's Some almost the same. But yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's so many subtle points. Mm. Among the many varieties of sadhaks found in this world, <clears throat> the devotee of Bhagavan, who performs bhajan while residing on the banks of Sri Radha Kunda, is the best. Mm. Among who? the many varieties of sadhaks found in this world. And he is the most dear to Sri Krishna. This is described in this 10th verse. More dear to Krishna than the followers of the path of karma are the jnanis who search after the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth. More dear to Krishna than all the varieties of jnanis is a pure devotee who has abandoned the attempt to understand the Absolute Truth through the cultivation of knowledge. Mm. <clears throat> and amongst all varieties of pure devotees, the Premi Bhakta, or one who dearly loves Krishna, is the most dear to him. And amongst all varieties of such loving, pure devotees, the Brajagopis are the most dear to Krishna. Of all the Brajagopis, Srimati Radhika is Krishna's dearmost, and her pond, Sri Radha Kunda, is similarly dear to him. Mm. Therefore, the intelligent person who possesses sufficient accumulated devotional merit, Sukriti, will cer most certainly reside on the banks of Sri Radha Kunda and within the mind render service to Sri Krishna's eightfold daily pastimes. Wow. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur himself did that. Yes. He has his place there at Radha Kunda. A little bit distance from the Kunda. And finally, Śrīla Prabhupāda, Bhaktisiddhānta Prabhupāda, is Anuvritti. More dear to Śrī Krishna than those who simply act to fulfill their selfish desires is one who is firmly established in the mode of goodness <clears throat> and is therefore dedicated to performing virtuous deeds. 
Yeah. So he's the only one so far that has mentioned the mode of goodness. Right. But that's an important thing to understand. And even more dear to Krishna than all such satkarmis <laughs> is a Brahmagyani. Satkarmi? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mode of goodness karmi. <laughs> yes. Okay. Who is transcendental to the modes of nature altogether, a Brahmagyani. Right. More dear to Krishna than all such jnanis is a pure devotee. More dear to Krishna than all such pure devotees is a premi bhakta mm. who loves him dearly. And even more dear to Krishna than all such premi bhaktas are the Brajagopis. And amongst all the Brajagopis, Srimati Radhika is Krishna's dear most. Mm. In the same way that Krishna loves her, he loves her pand, Shirada Kunda. Therefore, Krishna's devotees, who are the most fortunate people, take shelter of Sri Radha Kunda. So I remember when Prabhupada's Upadesha Amrita came, I was actually working on, uh, on the BBT, pasting it up before it was photographed. Cut and paste. Cut and paste. Yes. 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 <laughs> Literal. <laughs> Physical. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I actually designed the first cover. Wow. <laughs> they gave me the photo of Rupa Goswami's Samadhi. It wasn't really that I designed it, but I just put it together with the right size font and like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And the back cover, which is the, the photo, the famous photo of Radha Kunda. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was reading it, and it was like really hitting me that you have to understand you have to understand that Rupa Goswami is clearly telling. You have to understand how, what is the position of Radha Kunda. Because prior to that, I had gone to India. This was actually 1975. I just came back from my first trip to India. I didn't go to Ra Oh, yes, I did. I, I told this the other day. I did go there, but just once, you know, to Radha Kunda. And now, it's a couple of months after that, and I'm reading the Upadesha Amrita, where Radha Kund, I didn't, I didn't even have that before that, have the Upadesha Amrita. So, yeah, um, these verses are very essential, and uh, the very fact that Rupa Goswami has penned three entire verses right. out of 11, <laughs> all trying to help one understand what is Radha Kund, who is Shimati Radharani? How one has to take shelter of Radha Kunda and all of that. Okay, so tomorrow we'll hear from Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta his purport, which is clearly explaining what it really means to come to Radha Kunda, to take bath in Radha Kunda, and uh, and who is qualified to yeah. do that. Yeah, so he makes that very clear. Three out of eleven of the nectar of instruction. Yes, <laughs> and the last three as well, which is like yeah, this it's is a the conclusion. conclusion of everything. It's a conclusion. Yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, persons who are they're not fortunate enough to have the guidance of exalted pure Vaishnavas, and somehow other out of sentiment and so forth, a lot of persons come there. Guru Dev used to always tell us, I. I think he would sometimes mention that most of the persons who are here, they are mostly Prakriti Sahajya. Because there's many different categories. There's persons who are householders, who are born there, mm. and their, their children grow up there. And, you know, there's, there's all these different categories. You know. But amongst those who have come there from outside yeah. to reside there, the majority of them, and I, you know what? Uh, Mahanidhi Swami, you know, he, he lived there for so many years, right? And I remember quite some years back, I, I don't even remember when it was exactly, because I used to know him. He joined the Bhakta program in Los Angeles, so I, I knew him at that time when he was a new Bhakta, in 1975. So, you know... I may uh, have known him too, but I was really young. Yeah, you were very young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Anyway, he, I asked him, what is, your, what is your conclusion like? What is your experience? Because we hear how 
the our acharyas in a, in our line of bhakti siddhanta and so forth, they very clearly point out that the majority of persons who are living at Radhakunda and outwardly appearing like babajis or doing, you know, some kind of sadhana, some kind of bhajan and whatever, you know, but we hear that the majority of them are in the category of being quite fallen, mm. you know, in, in their personal behavior, and they keep women, and they even take bang, bang, bang and, and don't know how to wash properly. Yeah, the that's bathroom. always the that's always the one that our acharyas mentioned. They don't know how to clean themselves after passing stool, but yet they think they can be on the banks of Radhakunda. You know, so anyway, I asked him, "What is your experience?" Because he so many years he's living there has his house there yeah and you know always going around and visiting the temples and everything and he said yeah it's true he said it is true mm. the majority but there are a few there are a few very bona fide ones and that's what gurudev used to say you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater and just reject anybody that's staying there at radhakund but you have to be very very careful in your consideration mm. if you're going to associate because the majority of them are not good associations there must be the capacity for there to be somebody <clears throat> who is actually following Rupa Goswami's instructions yeah. to be there yeah. who's worthy of association yes it may be very um, quiet and internal oh, they not will showing be. off their oh, they budget. will be very yeah. quiet and internal Absolutely, you know. So that's our fortunate hearing of Sri Upadesha Amrita, and we'll continue with the topic of Sri Radha Kunda for the coming few days. When, when Sudevi's brother wanted to make a uh, band, he yeah. wanted to call it the Babaji team. Gurudev said no. Whoa, whoa my God. Gurudev said no. All will hate them. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Gurudev Jesus. said better, and he was thinking for a long time. He was just thinking, and then maybe like a minute or two, and then he said, Rup Kirtan Mandali. Rup Kirtan Mandali, better. Wow. And then he said, you, he told me, you can write something about Babaji's, the mm -hmm. difference between good Babaji's mm -hmm. and those who are not good. Mm -hmm. The kind of, you know, to, to help to establish that mm -hmm. point. Did you do that? Did not you write yet, no. Oh. When but, was that? Was um, in Munich, in uh, sure. just before he went back to India, um, 2010. Right. So he gave that. Sudevi's brother. Yeah. So did he start some group and name Yeah, they, they named it Rup Kirtan Mandali, and oh. they made an album. Oh. Okay. Uh, with that name, they didn't call themselves the Babajis. Right. But just Guru just said, "All will hate them." Mm. It was good as, yeah, yeah. Um, not a good idea. I don't know how they came up with that. Well, that's you know something that would be a little bit uh, catchy and edgy, right? So yeah, but you know the problem is that unfortunately some of our devotees who have made an attempt, uh, even calling themselves kirtaniyas, you know, which is a, a common term for those who sing kirtan and so forth but have not have not executed uh, the process given by Rupa Goswami and have deviated quite a lot on the very basic regulated principles so it's so Sahaja, it? yeah it's Prakriti Sahaja and there's no question about it I mean your, your actions are showing where your consciousness is sure and even if you are born in a devotee family and you, you had association with exalted devotee, but yet you in your life you outwardly perform then you're fallen yeah you're fallen doesn't mean that you can't again rectify yourself but in that condition of doing those activities which are so averse right and in the category of prakriti sahajism you have now become officially a prakriti sahajya right you know you may think whatever you want, that, oh, Krishna is accepting my kirtan, mm -hmm. you know, like this. But no, sorry. Uh, by the analysis of our acharyas, you have fallen short. What's interesting is that the difference between 
there's not such a big difference between the, say, the, the belief system uh, who we're following and most of the adherents. It's almost micro points that create the, the deviation yeah. consideration and those micro points make mm -hmm. such a big, big yes. difference to our acharyas. Yeah. And if it's not just a micro deviation, but a macro deviation, then that would be, be even a bigger consideration for our acharyas. Well, you know, Prabhupada always gave the example of the railway, you know, the two rail mm. rails. Yes. That if there's even a slight, slight um, measurement like twist that, is, that is going uh, a little bit off, Okay, but it, you don't notice it at first, but then gradually, gradually, then you notice it. So that's how deviation always is. Especially when the, the train beginning. derails. If what? When, when the train derails, you notice it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sri Sri Rupa Goswami Parada Ki Jai. Ki Jai. Jai Jai Sri Radhe. Okay.